All right, here's the geothermal pump installed with the hydraulic heating. That's a buffer tank or runtime tank, so the, the pump can run for a minimum of 10 minutes before it has to shut down. And this is a preheat tank over here. The DC, D superheater heats that. And there's the house electric tank. Here's the lines coming up. It's a DX geothermal system. You see the lines coming up from the ground. These lines go underneath the house, uh, 10 feet underneath the footings, and they're about uh, each loop. There's four loops here. Each loop is about 400 feet long. Uh, it's half inch pipe underneath the ground, and when it comes into the building, it just down in the hole there, it goes to three, uh, 3 8 pipe there. And over here, there's the main brains of the outfit. Open this drawer here too. There's the main power coming in. Transformers, and relays, capacitors. And this is the main heartbeat board, the main control board. And that's uh, connections for the thermostats or the house controls we call it on this one. <coughs> Here's uh, these lines go to the de <coughs> excuse me to the D superheater and up to the water tank. Keep that pre water tank, pre tank, pre heat tank, and the lines coming out of the in and out heat the hydronic heating in the house. First it goes up into this buffer tank, heats the buffer tank. And this is the heat pump circuit here. This loop here is the heat pump circuit. Back into the tank, back into the heat pump. Circuit number one, heat pump circuit. There's a little sensor right there. That's on the return line. It uh, tells the control, house control, which is this unit on the wall over here. It tells the house control what temperature that the pump is putting out there. And this is uh, controlled by Tecmar. Controls the zones in the house. <coughs> uh, it's hooked to an outside temperature sensor and an indoor temperature sensor. So when it's warmer outside, it as it gets warmer, it uh, lets the water in the tank get cooler and cooler, and the supply water get cooler and cooler because it doesn't need as much heat. And as it gets colder outside, it increases the heat in the system. Uh, this loop over here is the mixing loop. You follow it there. The mixing loop goes into the manifold. In the manifold, there's seven loops on this side going into the floor, hydraulic heating. And those two lines there, those two lines there, go over to a manifold on the other side of the house. Exactly the same as this one. That one little white thing there is a is an actuator, actuates, controls that zone, turns it on and off. And there's a five more of those on the one on the other side. And this loop in the middle here with this little pump here is called an injection pump or mixing loop. It comes from the heat pump loop. Those two lines makes a little loop into the mixing loop. And that injection pump, what it does is uh, when the mixing loop or the floor asks for more heat, it injects more heat or slows down. If it needs less heat, it slows down and speeds up. <coughs> for the amount of heat that's needed. And up here, we have another pump. Goes up to the fan coil, which is this unit over here. And that's for cooling in the summertime, and we can use it for a little bit of extra heating in the wintertime if we need it to. So that's the main forced air cooling for the summertime. It's just a hydronic coil in there. So cold water runs through the coil. And also, this unit controls the floor cooling. So we can also cool the floor. There's another thermostat in the house, a special thermostat that has a humidity sensor. And that sensor will keep the floor from getting damp or getting too cold. Uh, you have to have protect if you have hardwood in the house, you have to make sure you don't get it too warm or too cold. 
don't want moisture in it to swell the wood and don't want it too hot to crack the wood in the winter time. So the other thermostat from Tecmar controls that part of the system and it talks to this main brain out here which uh, does the rest of it. it. turns on zones and, and talks to different thermostats and the thermostats have freeze protection so if it gets too cold outside it'll start to turn on the pumps and circulate the water. And that's pretty much it for this system. Uh, this is a Pro Balance Ray Hall manifold, and um, the little valves on the on the top, the little white things, they, you can just adjust them. It gives you a gauge to s see what the flow in gallons per minute is, and you can adjust the red knobs on the bottom, or there's a valve underneath it, and it'll uh, adjust the flow. And you can just have a quick glance to make sure everything's working right. And there's a pressure bypass there, so if um, some of the zones shut off and the mix pump's pumping away, it'll, it'll bypass some pressure so it doesn't cause it to deadhead the pump. And over on this side, this is an air release. So any air that's in the system, it uh, passes by this, this tube here. It's about 18 inches of straight run in front of the air eliminator and the air bubbles rise to the top of the tube and out the top of that valve there. And down here of course we have an expansion tank. So when water heats up it of course it gets a, expands and that's why you have to have an expansion tank so it doesn't raise the pressure too much. And then we have the regular double back check full valve and then a pressure regulator valve that uh, that's the water come in. It's supposed to be hooked up to the water line yet, so if, if it's low on water, it'll when the pressure drops below a certain point, it'll allow a little bit of water into the system to keep it primed up. And that's about all there is to it. Just have a look around there. And oh, up here at the ceiling, there's another little valve up there just for purging the air out when I fill it up so that it, up at the high point so it could release the air. Alright, there's the lines going into the floor. And that is it. This is a geothermal heat pump, of course. Inside, the big round coil at the back is the main heat exchanger. And the compressor down in here, if you can see it, right there. And there's a couple of switches there, high pressure, low pressure switches. <coughs> Just shut it off if there's a problem. And on this side, let's see if you can see the. Just, oh boy. There's the TX valves. There's four loops, so one TX valve for <coughs> each loop that controls the amount of refrigerant that flows in those lines for so you can measure the superheat. And of course we have a reversing valve. This uh, particular machine will also run cooling in the summertime for air conditioning. Alright, there you have it.